Hey ladies and gents, and welcome back. So today we are going to do something a little differently. Usually we take a boot or a shoe that has been completely beat up and we you know, try to bring it back to life and whatnot. What we've never really done is gone through a resole that's pretty simple. Believe it or not, uh, don't let your eyes deceive you. This is the same pair of boots that Heath and I resold about six or seven months ago uh, from the gentleman named Adam. He has the YouTube channel called A Bomb 79, and he sent those up to us. Uh, like I said, last uh, I don't know six seven months ago, his boots were completely beat up. We did a complete transformation on those. Uh, check out the video here. Anyways, he sent us an email, I don't know, about a month ago and said, hey guys, I'm going to be coming up through town and I would love to meet you guys and hang out for a while. And by the way, I'm going to be dropping off the boots that you guys just resold. It's already time to resold them again. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I want to show you guys and, and discuss these boots a little bit along the process of just what a difference it can make when you take your shoes to a shoe cobbler and they do a great job resoling those boots or those shoes the first time around, just how much easier it is, how much cheaper it is the second and third time, you know, as you have them resold on and on and on. So I'll kind of be breaking up this shoe repair and talking about things along the way. So definitely don't miss it. But before we get out to the shop and start taking these boots apart, I do want to give a shout out to Army veteran Robert Patton and his company called Sheath. So as I mentioned, Robert is a U.S. Army veteran. And while he was serving over in Iraq, you know, things get really hot, sweaty, grimy down there, a lot of chafing going on. So when Robert got back to the U.S., he said, you know what, I'm going to start an underwear company that actually serves a better purpose and helps things out. Now what makes Sheath underwear so different is, well, it separates the twigs from the berries, if you know what I mean. Sheath underwear is the perfect anatomically ergonomic design for your package, because basically it keeps things from sticking down there. And it, what it does is it allows air to circulate around your package, keeping it cool and fresh all day long. And one thing I want to mention as well is they have new bamboo and mesh options. Guys, I've been wearing sheath underwear for a couple of years now, now you know, and it is hands down my favorite underwear of all the other brands that I've tried out there. It is super comfortable, it's soft, the pouch does work. And of course, we love businesses that give back and that's one of the things that Sheath does. They donate money to homeless and abused animal shelters and they also give back to soldiers who are mentally ill and physically disabled. By supporting Sheath Underwear, guys, you are supporting these great causes. Go on to their website, check them out. Guys, they have thousands of five-star reviews Folks just like me who absolutely love sheath underwear and they have put their comments on their website, go check them out and read it. And also, another great thing, they don't just carry men's underwear. Ladies, they've got it for you as well. So after this video, make sure you click on the link in the description below to receive a special offer from Sheath on your total order. Thank you again to Sheath for sponsoring today's video. Okay guys, so I'm hoping this is a quick and easy resole. If I remember correctly, we took his old rubber welt off, we put on a leather welt, and we put on a leather midsole. So I'm hoping I can just simply cut off this old sole without having to replace the midsole. We'll give it a shot. Okay guys, so we have these soles off of here and now we're just gonna clean these up a bit. Um, this, again, this is gonna be a really simple resole because when you've done something right the first time, when a customer brings a shoe or boot back in for a resole, it's a piece of cake. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get these nice and cleaned up, rehydrate again, as you can see, he has beat these up a lot since the last time they were in here. You guys always want me to show more of the cleaning and conditioning process. So uh, we're going to bring that to you. So let's get started on these. All right, we're going to use some saddle soap on these boots to really get deep into the pores and try to get a lot of this dirt out before we put conditioner on them. 
All right, first thing you wanna do is just take a brush and you wanna make sure you're trying to get as much surface dirt and dust off as you can because if you don't do that and you use saddle soap, then it's just gonna turn into a mud bath. And I'm not gonna pull these old stitches out. I'll tell you why in a little bit, but I do wanna to try to get them as clean as possible and that welt as clean as possible. So you wanna make sure you're getting your brush along that welt line as well. All right, and you can see by using the saddle soap just how much dirt I'm able to pull off of that leather. So it's good every now and then, especially if you're using your boots or shoes to do, you know, regularly hard work. You know, like, you know, Adam here, he's in a workshop all day. So of course they're gonna get really nasty like mine and Heat's boots do. So you're gonna to want to deep clean your leather a lot more often. Okay guys, I know y'all usually hit me up with a ton of questions, so I'm gonna try to get into your brains right now before you leave a comment and answer what I think you might ask. Okay, first of all, you're probably wondering why we don't pull the old stitches out. So obviously, you can see we left the old stitches in. On a lot of our shoe repairs, we usually take those stitches out. So this is the midsole, and you can see that we stitched, or we originally stitched these on and it's only holding on the midsole and we want to keep it like this on a lot of our other shoe repairs remember the stitches are going through the welt into the actual sole and if that were the case yeah we'd have to remove them but because this is the midsole the midsole as you can see is it still in terrific shape all of the stitches are being held together nothing is pulled apart so there's absolutely zero reason to take these stitches off and to replace this. Okay, the only thing we're gonna do now is just take this rougher and just rough this leather up again so that the uh, glue adheres better to it. All right, we're just gonna take some acetone here and just rub that on these new Christy soles, just again to take off some of that potential residue that's left on these and possibly prevents it from holding the, uh, the glue on really well. All right, let that dry and then we'll put some glue on. Okay guys, so we've gotten these all roughed up. We've got acetone put on these, they're roughed up. Now let's go put on the glue. Okay guys, so these boots have been resold and now it's just time to put some conditioning agents and uh, colored pigment back into it. What I like to use on any oil leather boots is the Saphir Oil Leather Cream. I've got medium brown and neutral and I'll show you how I go about using those. So neutral is always a good option to get because even though it looks white, it comes out clear on your leather. So you can put it up along the welt and you don't have to worry about colored, you know, coloring your stitches at all. Um, so that's always a good option. Now, it doesn't have any colored pigment in it, so you're not going to be able to cover up any scuffs. So I'm going to take some of this brown 
and I'm gonna rub the brown into the leather, trying to watch out for the white stitches, and that will help put the color back into the leather. Now there's lots of different products that you can use on your leather boots. I'm not saying that oiled leather cream is the absolute must. I know a lot of guys, especially when they use boots like this on construction sites and whatnot, they like to use mink oil and things like that. You can definitely do that. Um, it's not gonna hurt your leather, um, but you know, it may darken it quite a bit. For my shoes and boots, I like to keep it where you can see the patina and the, uh, the original color of the leather. So just another option to throw out there at you. Okay, so the boots are done. And just a quick recap on what we did, uh, why we did certain things. Again, uh, these boots were Adams. As uh, if you have not seen the previous video where we took these boots completely apart and completely modified them to make them even better, uh, then check out that video as soon as this is over. The video should pop right up on your screen. Definitely click on it and you can see the whole thing. But what we did today was we just did a simple resole. Um, all we did is heated up the old Christie sole, peeled it off, put a new one on, condition and shine them. If you took these to your local cobbler, it would not cost, probably, it'd be cheaper than a hundred bucks to have those redone. It's a very simple resole. And again, the reason that it is so simple is because we did everything correctly the first go around. Um, back when these soles were original, um, Thurgood likes to use a rubber welt. Rubber welts just don't hold up as well after a while. So again, we took that off, put it on a leather sole or a leather welt, put on leather midsoles, and it just made the boot so much better. So that going forward, as we did today, the resole is just as simple, just as quick, and even cheaper than it was the first go around. Just as a reminder, if you're taking your shoes to a shoe cobbler, just make sure they're doing a great job that first go around. It really does make a difference. And also upgrading to better materials on that resole, oftentimes from what you get at the factory, pays off huge in the long run. Oh, and I do have two more things because I know you guys are gonna ask, I know you're telling me right now, hey, wrap, wrap it up, wrap it up, I'm ready to go. Let me just throw out two things because I can see you guys, your mind's working. You're gonna leave me a comment down below and I don't wanna to have to answer it second time. Trent, why did you not replace the cork? Okay, one, this pair of boots, watch the other video. Like I said, this pair of boots does not have cork. It has almost like a pour-on padding. So pour-on bounces back. Um, there's no reason to replace pour-on. It's only, you know, like I said, five, six, seven months old. That pour-on is perfectly new. It's going to bounce back. No reason to re replace that at all. The second question I can see buzzing in your minds is, hey, Trent, why didn't you pull out the old stitches and replace them? It would look so much better with, you know, fresh white stitching. Okay, here's the answer to that one. When a shoe cobbler pulls out the old stitches, there's a good chance if we work with it, we can adjust the machines, that we can try to hit the original holes with that machine but it's no guarantee. I don't care who the shoe cobbler is, it is no guarantee. We do try our best, but there's always that possibility that you're not gonna line those holes up perfectly, and what it's gonna end up doing is that machine's gonna stitch new holes. Well, you don't want a lot of new holes in your well. You want to keep those original holes as long as possible. Like I showed you before, the stitches and the threads on that look perfectly fine. Uh, they're only five to six months old. They have not started pulling apart. So there is zero reason you would want your shoe cobbler to take those stitches out because again, you risk making additional holes, which is going to wear your welt out faster. Okay, I think I've answered just about every question that could possibly be asked. I know you guys, your brains are working. You're going to have other ones out there. Leave me a comment down below. I will try to get back to as many of those as possible if you have any questions. Also, again, I know I said it in the last video, but go check out ABOM79, awesome channel. It's a big channel, he does great work, check him out. Okay, I know we've said it once, I know we've said it twice, probably a hundred times, but give us a big thumbs up, like the channel, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, guys, y'all have a good one.